Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers 2016 circuit. This is the final day of Future Tournament number two. My name is TJ, and I'm joined once again. It's been a while by That's Admirable. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. Just woke up, uh, ready to cast these games. We got three great matches for you guys today, and potentially some, uh, some rematches on the board here as well, with both Dog and Zelay making it to top four of this one. Uh, but first up, Dog versus VLPS. This is bound to be a good one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all the matches today will be best of seven, unlike the past two days. When the players submitted their deck list, they submitted five, so including a secret deck. And uh, now it'll be Conquest with uh, five decks in one band instead of four decks in one band. So uh, a little bit of an, an interesting twist going into the best of seven day today. As Admirable sort of uh, mentioned there, Dog vs. VLPS is the first semifinal, uh, and then Lead Paint versus Zelay is going to be the second semifinal. And uh, we have $6,000 uh, to give away. Uh, I believe uh, some of it has already gone to uh, Fist 6, but um, $6,000 for, for this feature tournament, as well as all of the feature tournaments throughout the course of the year. So uh, lots of great stuff today. And Dog vs. VLPS first. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that. VLPS is a player that's on the rise, and Dog's a player that sort of solidified his spot in the Hearthstone scene already. Yeah, I mean, you talk about Dog's resume. I mean, this guy has been killing it for years at this point. Over $20,000 in caches uh, helped lead NA to a victory over the Chinese team uh, when he went over there back in 2000, late 2015. Uh, Celestial Invitational got for, uh, got fifth through eighth place in that one, $1,250. Uh, since then, uh, I-League Star Series got 5 k for that one. Second place at True Silver uh, recently, 5 k for that one as well. And you take a look at VLPS, uh, I mean, his major finish uh, was part of that uh, NA team that helped beat China as well. I mean, they they absolutely crushed them in that performance. Uh, and yeah. since then, he's also had a top eight at America's Championship. And at the last Onog feature event, uh, also was was a part of that one too. So look out for this guy. I think 26 years, 2016 is going to be a big year for him. We, we usually when you see him on ladder, he's got a single digit number next to his name. This guy's just been crushing it lately. And his ambition and his passion is rising right up there as well. Yeah, VLPS is the second highest rated player in North America for ladder finishes over the last six months. Uh, he's had a top 100 finish. And like you mentioned, single digits, I think four of those were in the top 10, which is an, an astonishing. Um, before we jump into the match, uh, we want to uh, make sure we take this opportunity to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. Geico is a title sponsor of the event, as well as Video Game Boaters Network and, of course, Cyber Power PC. Throughout the day, make sure you guys are headed over to geico.onog.gg for, for more information about the tournament. The next open is actually on April 30th, so in just two weeks. So if you want to sign up for that, have your chance to win some bucks, have your chance to uh, play in these feature tournaments, head over there, sign up for the tournament, and in doing so, uh, also enter in to win that Cyber Power PC uh, that you can see on the screen there. So big shout out to those guys. Wouldn't be possible without them. And we get to see all of this uh, great Onog action um, throughout the entire year. We started, I think, a couple months ago, and we're not going to end until PAX Prime, the grand finals at PAX Prime in a few months. So it's 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 going to be great. I, I think we're about to jump in. Let's start talking about their decks a little bit. Uh, Druid Band uh, from Dog and Shaman Band from VLPS. Yeah, I'm actually kind of uh, interested that VLPS has chosen not to bring Druid just with how strong of a deck it's been recently. Yeah. I mean, this has kind of been the talk of the game since as long as Druid's been a deck. I mean, Force yeah. Nature Savage Roar, still one of the strongest combos that's out there. We haven't really found a great way to fend it off just yet. Usually it's decks that are just going to match it well versus Druid anyway. Um, but to see him ban Druid, see, that's the interesting thing to me. He says, this deck is a little bit too powerful. I don't want to play against it. And he's yet to bring it on his own. So kind of an insight into the way that VLPS is going to want to play these games. He strikes me as more of a fair player, uh, likes to likes to use some powerful stuff, but likes decisions to be the bulk of, of what's going to be deciding these games. Dog, uh, he's kind of on the same one this one. The mirror match of Reno Jackson decks. Always very interesting to watch players uh, play this one. And VLPS, he's got to be close to second to none in terms of experience. He has thousands of games logged with this deck. Yeah, um, and the, the deck from Dog, I believe, uh, uh, is actually a, just a demon handlock. Um, it's got some interesting tech cards uh, thrown in there, um, it, and uh, it's it, it was one of the best decks that he played over the course of uh, Friday's games. I believe his group was played on Friday. So it, I thought there was an interesting choice. Another choice from Dog, his Paladin deck is actually mid-range Paladin, just straight-up mid-range Paladin, and a greedy one. 
at that. So he brought some crazy decks and ended up, I think, 3-1-ing and then 3 0 his way through his group. So he had an impressive performance. VLPS had a little bit of a tougher time getting through his uh, his group stage yesterday. Yeah, it's starting to see this come together. Uh, Demon Handlock is definitely the call on this one. I mean, you've been watching these matches all weekend. Uh, this yeah. is my first day of casting this. Um, but these guys are playing so fast so far. It gives you a good idea of how much experience they have. They know that life tapping is super important in this one. They understand the tempo is going to basically drive the game and dictate uh, who's ahead in this one. And Dog, finally with his turn 5 Defender of Argus, it looks like he takes the board. Yeah, and Dog is just a fast player in general. I remember watching Dog when he first started streaming, back when he hit like a rank 1 one season and uh, some random people started to go to his stream, you know, before people started spamming in his chat for him to take off his shirt. Um, he he was he has played fast since, since the beginning, so that's just the kind of player he is. I, I want to call it instinctual. Um, like you said, lots of practice on a deck means you, you start seeing the decision that you need to make a lot quicker. But it's interesting uh, to see that players... A player like him plays that quickly. Yeah, this implosion can be so important to you. If this one fails, Ooh. not quite. Just squeeze that one out. Second yeah. Emperor activation would have put in a big hurt on this game. Uh, but now VLPS looks like he's kind of in a good spot. I mean, being able to, to AoE twice in a row and follow it up with implosion, you're going to take the board just a little bit. Look, dog's hellfiring these guys. And then just yeah. antique healbot and pass. So this, this is kind of the turn that really gets interesting at this point now, is at what point do you stop life tapping and start going towards development? And Dog has chosen turn 7 for this. I think a lot of this is because of the follow-up potential from VLPS. He's life tapped a lot at this point. He hasn't really used any strong cards. He's bound to have something in his hand. And so Dog wanted to get something out for this turn. But now facing down the Dr. Boom, this feels like it's going to... This is where things, I think, are going to get a little bit tough for him for the rest of the game. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, though. Dog actually has... Uh, he, he was two damage off lethal that turn with double dark bomb plus a doom guard, <laughs> which is kind of funny. He was actually getting pretty close, but he's going to find a way around this. And this matchup's tough because the I, I think the overall quality of the strong minions from the demon handlock is a lot better. But the uh, real lock has more tools and uh, it, but less AOE, so you don't have those swing turns with shadow flames. You have to really be greedy with your shadow flame and. I don't know if that's a, a good enough Shadow Flame to be able to push through. He does run combo, though, which is a big deal. Yeah, I think that's why the, the Shadow Flame here is so important for VLPS. It's just the fact that he's pushing enough damage for a dog to worry about, but not enough to really make Molten Giant a big threat. I mean, this is yeah. I feel like this board position is going to really heavy, heavily favor VLPS at this point. Uh, you know, he's already got Reno Jackson in hand. Uh, he's a little bit ahead on life taps. Like, Dog's forcing down a five-mana Molten Giant here. This isn't really, like, an ideal situation for him. Uh, but VLPS's answer is pretty expensive. I mean, having to siphon all this does set back your development on the following turn a lot. Um, and that's something that Dog is really looking for, is to get back this board somehow and start taking advantage of the fact that he's the one in the lead. Um, yeah. But it's just a couple more turns, though. I mean, that could really change everything. Like you said, this is, like, the combo deck. And Dog's kind of getting that life total where he doesn't necessarily need Faceless Manipulator to make Leroy Jenkins' power overwhelming uh, such a big deal. And so to yeah. see how this is going to get handled by VLPS, uh, you know, these next this next draw, even choosing a Dark Bomb here on the Recombobulator, understands his life totals. Just, he's so vulnerable at this point. Yeah, you know, so much respect. He saw the... Uh, um, he, he realizes what type of deck this is. I'm sure he saw VLPS's games last uh, in, in his group stage and, and knows exactly what kind of deck this is. VLPS does not try to keep his deck secret either. The decks that he plays on his stream... And practices on his stream, those are the decks that he brings to tournaments. He practices yeah. Hybrid Hunter. He practices Reno Handlock. He practices Control War. He practices Control Priest. And those are all the decks that he brings to tournaments. So you got to know what kind of uh, uh, decks he's bringing. Now, if Dog hadn't drawn this Molten Giant, do you think we're looking at Jaraxxus this turn? This is kind of a crazy draw, actually. Ah, it's dangerous. He, he also needs a, a Taunt Up as well, which um, he is... I don't know. He, he, he's like mousing over here. the... Yeah. You kind of got to be vulnerable for that one turn. Like, there's always that one turn as Handlock where you, you kind of got to take the risk and be vulnerable. Uh, and it's better to do it earlier rather than later. And he's not dead yet. That's an, that's an interesting draw from VLPS. I think that Dog's play here... Like, with the brand, he just saw that VLPS had trouble answering the last Molten Giant. Like, he siphon-sold it instead of, like, big game-huntering it. 
So yeah. his development got thrown so far behind. So I think that was really the turn for Dog to try to put a little bit extra pressure out there. You know, with Brand being such a like priority kill, basically, um, I like that was basically the one turn. And for that, for VLPS, it was like combo or twisting nether or be behind. And now, so this is the turn that Dog gets to drop Jaraxxus. Maybe the Void Caller changes things, but I doubt it. Um, and at this point, it's just going to be a matter of swinging away. Yeah, I, I don't think you can afford to have the Jaraxxus be popped out from from void caller uh, just because you need the, that since you're sort of getting outvalued uh, by the the Reno warlock and Reno will bring that back up and make it so that you have to get through more health you need the six sixes every single turn in order to have a shot but there's Reno Jackson played and, and now it's like the game has been reset yeah so quick owl mortal coil from dog nice pickup on the uh on the Shadow Flame as well, able to have that AOE threat, I think really important for in this game. And it's looking like, it's looking like these may not get taunted this turn. And this is another big decision for Dog. Like this is an extra four damage that BLPS has out right now. Does he need to taunt? And he feels like he does. I can't blame him for this. You know, I think ideally he'd like to taunt up the Void Caller and have the threat of the extra demon coming out of it back behind this. But yeah. I think given the situation, if he, if he takes that risk, like that's an opportunity for him to die. And at yeah. this point, if the game keeps staying an attrition battle, that is such good news for VLPS. Yeah. And Dog is going to be getting the Infernals every turn. But the thing is, is, you know, outside of one more heal bot, Dog's never going to be able to get outside that 15 range. So like you said, that War of Attrition, as long as VLPS can keep somewhat of a board presence and... May, may force Dog to use his taunts, then he'll eventually he'll be able to get through with the combo, which he hasn't even drawn full of yet. He still only has 10 damage from hand, and even if he does draw Faceless, he's still an Emperor away from being able to combo all the damage in a single turn. Yeah, which Shadow Flame is going to be? He's going to choose to Shadow Flame off this Void Caller here, um, and unbeknownst to him, this is going to open him to Mind Control Tech at this point from VLPS, but he gets that extra damage on the line. Oh, he's actually going to trade off the defender yeah. cards. Really oh. smart stuff there. Yeah, very keen play. I mean, this is a spot I think a lot of people just wouldn't use their life total given they have anti keelbot and Sludge Belcher here. But now the fact that he's not vulnerable to Mind Control tech, this feels like it's so easy for him to stay ahead in the game now. Yeah, well, BGH is a little bit late, I'd say, after, you know, three <laughs> seven plus health or seven plus attack minions were played onto the board. He finally draws it. Second Void Caller. This game he's is actually, looking like it could be all dog. Yeah, he picked up the pieces that he needed to, and, and VLPS is still just whiffing. He's got pretty much those three dead cards in his hand right now with being Alex Straza, Soulfire, and Leroy Jenkins. None of those cards are fantastic you know, by themselves. They're great in, in tandem with other things, like if Leroy Jenkins gets reduced and he can fit in the combination, or if he, he plays Alex Straza early on, to, to bring Dog dog down. Um, it's going to be tough, I think, for VLPS to climb back, even though he, it did seem like he was outvaluing Dog was really heavily early on. Yeah, so he's going to go for the trade here. And, and once again, plays around Mind wow. Control Tech. Doesn't even hero power. This is crazy play from Dog. I mean, you thought he was playing around Mind Control Tech before the trade. The fact that he foregoes the Infernal this turn, like, this is Dex insanity. Yeah. Oh, but there's the faceless manipulator from VLPS. He's so close to being able to combo this. But I mean, he's just—he has to dark bomb this anti kill bot just to stay alive on board. And Dog still has a sludge belcher. So that's a big damage deal. from Dog this turn. Oh, there's the mind control tech too. So now Dog's free to overdevelop. Dog's seen all the AOE this game too. Like, how does VLPS actually? Oh, one point of damage will end this game. Okay, no good discover for him. Mm. Um, I mean, at this point, he's seen all the AOE. He's seen mind control tech. This Iron Beak, has he seen Iron Beak Owl yet? I think it's the one he hasn't seen. Yeah, no, Iron, he hasn't seen Iron Beak Owl yet. Um, Iron Beak Owl was used on his, he used his own Iron Beak Owl on a Twilight Drake from VLPS, but I don't think he's seen one. You can get a nice little side. Undertaker buff there. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> underwhelming compared to the days of old. Yeah, but it looks like he's going to trade both the minions into these guys as well. I don't think there's a reason not to. He's seen pretty much every substantial AoE. He's seen Shadow Flame and Twisting Nether. And those he's are the two. Seen, he's seen Hellfire and Demon Wrath, too. He's actually seen, he's seen all, all four. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I, I it's, this game's been going on for a while. I haven't quite been able to see the yeah. uh, Demon Wrath. Well, Ooze a little late, and Emperor Thorstein a bit late as well. I think that's been the, the story of the day here for for VLPS so far. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to dig for answers, but there's nothing left in there, and that's it. I mean, not it doesn't find the combo pieces in time, and VLPS just crumbles under the Drax's pressure. Dog, very um. Very safe there in the in the mid late stages of the game, like playing around mind control tech the way he did. I mean that that took away one of the win conditions from VLPS, which was just mind control teching your opponent's strongest minion and then being yeah. able to keep the tempo afterwards. Very keen play from Dog in that one. Yeah, and I think the only risk he took in that game was the turn where he decided not to taunt up. That was the only risk he took, and that was he was at sixteen health, and that was the turn before he was about to play Draxus. So that was pretty much the only window uh, where he was where he was able to take a risk, and so he made sure that he did it on that turn. So he had a lot of room moving forward. Every other turn he played safe, even going as far as to dark bomb a three two to make sure that he wasn't going to be in range of combo. That was expertly played by Dog, I feel. Yeah, second zombie chow deck in a row for Dog at this point. Like you said, this is a mid range paladin deck. Uh, VLPS has brought Priest to the table here. With a copy of Flash Heal and Acolyte Pain, you better believe you're going to find some Hawk and I Soul Priest in here as well. And at least Star Seeker for the long game plan. Um, now, Dog come firing early, and I know that Paladin... It, it's kind of like... It's almost like tricky how how much it feels like Paladin is favored in this matchup. And the way I think they're mostly favored is in the early stages of the game. If the Priest doesn't really check the early aggression, they have to use a lot of tools to fight back on the board. But if yeah. they get the board early... The Paladin kind of struggles to ever regain that control. And so with this start from Dog, do you think that, like, do you feel like he has the advantage in this game because of that? Or do you feel like that VLPS has still uh, got, like, a really good fighting chance in this one? Uh, I think VLPS has a fighting chance just because the way this deck is set up. Uh, Priest used to be a deck where once you run out of stuff, you're out of stuff. But with this new type of Priest, you always have Burst with the Flash Heal. You also have Elise Star Seeker, so you have that longevity. But Dog also has a, a sneaky little card there tucked away in his hand, just a card True Heart. The one ones, similar to against Control Warrior, where they don't have a hero power that interacts with the board, those one ones provide so much value later on in the game when uh, both players are sort of out of powerful cards. And so uh, this is going to be close, I, I feel, just because of the way the these decks work, but Duck's already put on so much pressure. He's got the just a card True Heart. It's going to be a while before VLPS is able to get a lot going. And uh, so I still feel that Dog is is, is going to be favored. Yeah. Goes ahead and plays the Outdoor Peacekeeper here. Uh, wants to keep pressure on the board. The Holy Nova did a great job cleaning this board up. Uh, but still on the offensive, the LPS does have a lot of tools to slow this down, though. It picks up Light Bomb, too. That's such an important one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just got True Heart. Get it rolling. Uh, okay. <sighs> does have a couple of options here, too, though. I mean, at this point, when he, when he lands the Justicar here... Um, I feel like his plan just completely shifts away from the aggressive stance he took. Like, okay, yeah. the aggressive stance got cleared up. Um, my opponent played a sludge belcher to back that up. The aggression's gone at this point. Now he needs to ride that hero power for quite a while here to make up for the for the loss from that the uh, Holy Nova um, caused on this board. VLPS just going to go for Elise Star Seeker and heal. Yeah, so now you just hero power every turn. Uh, he plays really heavily into Light Bomb if he plays Dr. Boom and smacks the face here. He could play Dr. Boom and trade. You know, I, I would be, you know, okay with, with that play. Um, you, you don't really have burst finishers as a as a paladin. You you might have a Blessing of Kings and a True Silver Champion. Eight damage burst is what you top out at <laughs> as a paladin. And yeah. that's for eight mana. So it's it, you, the aggressive line is not as important. And I like how he plays a little bit around Light Bomb here. And he fits in that hero power, like you mentioned, riding that out. Yeah, and so this is the spot I think where the game could potentially go in VLPS's favor. Like if he starts, if he keeps using his cards right over the next couple of turns, it's going to be pretty easy for him to clean up most of this board pressure. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just going to choose to heal up the Wild Pyromancer here. So Dog set up to trade uh, this Justicar here well, but given that VLPS is at 13, you know he may have some different ideas in mind here. Yeah, he's still got lots of tools, though. Uh, and Tomb is, you know, the ultimate counter to your Enforging. 
Uh, Light Bomb is a, is a reset against a class that has trouble reloading the board uh, in mid-range Paladin. Cabal Shadow Priest, again, uh, there's so many cards that that, that that thing can take that are fantastic in mid-range Paladin. Shield of Minibot, Haunted Creeper, which I think Dog Runs 2 in this mid-range Paladin deck. Um, and worst comes to worst, you take a 1-1, one -one, which there's always going to be one of those. There's a, a plethora of those in, in this deck. And just going to go with Dr. Boom here. Man, Dog had so many decisions last turn. He could have gone for Aldor Trades. He could have gone for Aldor Keeper of Uldaman uh, to clear the board and keep a little bit of pressure on his side. Goes for Dr. Boom this turn instead. I mean, does, is he feeling like maybe the LPS doesn't have a Light Bomb or is just going to have to expend a ton if he wants to Entomb this? Yeah, just going to Light Bomb. Don't blame him for that one. And this is one Ooh. spot once again. Like, the Light Bomb does a good okay. job clearing this up. But Dog just keeps getting initiative turn after turn. And to me, that's the big deal of this game, is that Dog is kind of the one maintaining his, his footing in this game. Yeah. Like, and look, he DLPS just AoEs, 5 one ones go. <laughs> yeah. And he plays around Cabal Shatter Place nicely here, making sure that he buffs up the Haunted Creeper as opposed to one of the 1-1 one -one hero powers. And now it's going to be tough. DLPS finds his own Jessica True Heart, but... Can't even fit it in that turn. Can't even double dip with those hero powers. Hmm. Yeah, once again, uh, this is the, the interesting part about Paladin to me, is how many options that Keeper Moldawan gives you turn after turn. Like, oh, yeah. When is the right time to use this card? And so here he's taking it just like, he's, you know what? Five damage is enough on this Death Lord. I need to take this right now. Looks like he's going to muster for battle. Keep the Keeper of Moldawan as fresh as he can. Keeps, it's protecting it from Light Bomb, and it's protecting it from, uh... From, um, I think he might even trade in the Keeper. Yeah, it's just gonna trade. To, oh. Yeah. Pulling the Quartermaster out doesn't feel very good. <laughs> no, not at all. Especially when you have that many 1-1s one -ones on the board. And he doesn't get the maximum value of this hero power, but he's still... Ooh. Oh. That doesn't... I mean, it allows him to clear up the 1-1s, one but look how much damage he's taking. He's taking 8, 9 damage at least... He can play that and Cabal Shadow... No, he wouldn't be able to... He could Ball Shadow Priest the uh, the uh, Quartermaster. Yep. Just Flash Heal here to keep him tough top up. Clear up the 1-1s one to take that 2-4. That's left over. Dangerous spot for him, though. I mean, if Dog if Dog can manage to clear up the next couple of uh, turns very well, I feel like VLPS is really in trouble. And the hero power is just going to keep churning as well. Yeah. And this is also where, you know, that... He that um, yeah, like you mentioned, the hero power comes into play even more, even more so because dogs out of stuff. Or sorry, VLPS is out of stuff to start removing the board. If he picks up that uh, Alkani Soul Priest, he's gonna have a play. Ooh, second Death Lord provide a little bit of a uh, little bit of a, of a wall here for VLPS. That's kind of exactly what he needs right now too. I mean, being at seven and dog completely using all of his like dogs out of resources at this point. So it's a matter of whether or not this next card can get through it. Tyrion right after the Entomb gets used. Wow. Wow, that is a huge draw. He <laughs> just needs some heat behind this. Or this game is going to be done quick. I, I mean, I even mentioned it earlier. I said Entomb is one of the best ways to deal with Tyrion Ford Ring. I think it is hands down the best. Because not only do you not give them the Ashbringer, but you put a Tyrion in your deck, which is nuts as, as a priest, I feel. And so now without that Entomb, I feel like... The Entomb last last turn was necessary by by BLPS to allow him to clear off some of the board Ugh. and uh, allow him to hold on to his own. But Zombie Chow is probably the worst draw he could have gotten from this deck, and I this is looks like it's over. That's I mean that draw the Zombie Chow was nailed in the coffin. BLPS never finds an Akanai this game, and that's something that Priest is always kind of victim to is that it's got a lot of these two card combos in its deck that when you draw them and you're able to utilize them very well, like that's where Priest pulls ahead, is it gets so much value from two-card combinations that the hero power topping you back up to 30 and then just relying on the sheer raw power of your cards afterwards, um, that's like the bread and butter of that deck. But when you yeah. kind of draw it piece by piece and you have one piece left hanging, that's when Priest kind of looks like it's at its worst. I mean, if you looked at that game, Circle of Healing was a dead card almost the entire time. So much so that he was forced to entomb a 3-3 Divine Shield just so he can keep control of the board because the yeah. pressure dog was pushing out there. And then that Tyrion afterwards. Wow. I mean, what better draw could be a possible guy? I, mean, I guess Quartermaster would have been really good there as well. Um, but one of them got pulled out from the Death Lord there too. It's just, you know, you get that Justicar Hero Power rolling. 
you were going to be able to keep pressure on Priest the entire game. Yeah, very true. And now we're going to roll into one of my favorite matchups. Control Warrior versus Control Warrior. Now, we don't know for sure yet. Dog still could be patron, but I highly doubt it. And, yep, there's some shield maidens. <laughs> that, Who's uh, ready to take up? Yep, that's... That's basically, and you can see both players sort of hard mulliganing there. And this is a matchup where you need to hard mulligan for at least Star Seeker and just a card True Heart. Uh, given that those are the versions that they're playing, there are some weird versions that some people have been playing lately with uh, Iron Juggernauts <laughs> and Youthful Brewmasters. I, I went over to uh, uh, Singapore to cast the Singapore Major, and there was actually like five players that were bringing Control Warrior deck that didn't run at least Star Seeker, but ran. Double youthful brewmaster and iron juggernaut, and death lords and colette oracles. That's like that's a big nod to the style of play in their area too. They know yeah. that people are going to be playing these long term control decks, and so they they feel like rather than fill my deck with legendaries, I can just fill my opponent's deck with burrowing mines. Yeah, and that'll be enough to get it. And at least yeah. found for VLPS right on turn four. I mean, like you mentioned, this is kind of the play that VLPS is looking for. And now at this point, he's got two very different options how to play this game. Yeah. Number one is he can kind of race towards the golden monkey and try to get so many legendaries that he can outright kill dog based on his uh just his card value individually mm -hmm. the second option is to continue to try to play the fatigue game and let elise kind of be like your silver bullet card at the end with the golden monkey turning his last few dead cards into legendaries yeah um but he's kind of the one in control of that scenario unless dog can manage to to put him on a back foot and force him to use cards in a way he doesn't want to uh, yeah. So this is that, that's the advantage you get from drawing at least early on, and that's why it's so important. Yeah, he just needs that just a card true heart. Uh, you want to make sure in this matchup that even if you do get at least early and get the map early, you you wait until you get the just a card true heart most of the time before you end up playing that golden monkey. Even if you're going for the game plan of super aggressive golden monkey early, fill your deck with legendaries and try and win from there. But I, I feel like that is the best. I played a lot of this matchup, and I feel like the best way. Given both players have early um, Elise and early Justicar, is to Golden Monkey early. Because even though your opponent's going to have removal, they're not going to have the threats to match your threats. So eventually you're just going to, you know, push them out of the game as long as you don't get a terrible draw of legendaries. Like multiple Nat Pagels, you know, multiple like Blood Mage Thanoses and things like that. Yeah, VLPS kind of a, a victim of his own hand right now. Got the early Elise, but his follow-up afterwards is just so bad. Two copies of Roll, two copies of Acolyte, and the Despite's not really uh, being effective lining up with these versus the Sludge Belchers right now. <laughs> Back to buy a second one. This is looking pretty bad for VLPS suddenly. Yeah. So, Dog is holding off on his shield blocks. And in the past, uh, people will tell you in the Control Warrior Mirror, you're never draw. And a lot of people will still tell you that, never draw. But if your opponent has played one of those key cards, like a Leaf Star Seeker, Justice Card, True Heart, and you haven't found them yet, sometimes it is okay to draw because if you wait, the longer you wait, the more value your opponent's sort of gaining. gaining. Oh, wow. wow. That is going to really change this game. The fact that Elise gets pulled out here, Dog kind of loses that button as his longevity. Oh, I don't know about this one, TJ. I don't know if it's even possible to win if a least star seeker comes out of your your deck unless just a card true heart is like vlps's last card and monkey is like vlps's last card i don't know if it's even possible a lot of times you see players not even kill death lord in this matchup until they've played both of those cards because it's too risky to have one of those key cards pulled out of your deck yeah and so vlps chooses to draw here with the slam and a lot of that's coming from the fact that dog chose to use shield block last turn every yeah. single time dog draws a card VLPS knows that he can draw a card and, ca and stay kind of even in the fatigue race because of that. Yeah. So when you hear players say they never want to draw, what they really mean is they're kind of reluctant to initiate drawing cards because yeah. if their opponent has good responses to it, it means that they're the ones who can kind of control the waiting game. They pull ahead in the fatigue race and it puts a lot of pressure on you. But at this point, dogs, the Elise being gone completely changes the way he has to play this game. I think he has to get going. And that's going to open him up to things like the LPS's Brawl right here. Uh, it's going to make this second death spike get a lot better. The fact that he had to Harrison Jones drew another card from it. If Dog doesn't put together enough pressure here and keep VLPS's life total in check, that's really a spot for VLPS to try to win the game. And look, Dog's just decided at this point, you know what, I'm just going to load up the Acolytes and start going here. I have yeah. to kill VLPS or he has inevitability. 
Feels like nowadays this matchup even rarely comes down to fatigue, just because both players end up dropping bombs in the late game. Um, with the with the golden monkey, that you just you. Oh wow. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I would be surprised if Dog. He, he'll probably stay in this game, you know, just because this is the semifinals of a feature tournament, you know. Uh, but this is one of those games where you're just like, yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna piece together a win. The strongest minion he probably has left in his deck is just a Gar Two Heart. Not not based off of its effect, but like the strongest body minion he has left yeah. in his maybe deck. Maybe maybe a, a Grom's left in here. Oh yeah, yeah, Grom too. Yeah, Grom could be a card, but is Grom <laughs> gonna be enough to win him a game? But yeah, Grom will probably do ten damage first, but it's gonna be removed right away. Yeah, there is the Grom. How often do you see four acolytes on board, TJ? Uh, in a control warrior mirror, rarely. <laughs> in, in any match of really, if ever. Is this an opportunity for Dog to to force card draws here, though? Like, is there a way he can force VLPS to draw too many cards here? The most he can force him to draw is four if he hits both Acolytes twice, and then the natural draw from VLPS will be five. VLPS still won't overdraw. So he can force him to draw, but I don't... Fatigue might be a win condition in that, that scenario. He'd have to put on a lot of pressure. He does have Bash. I mean, there is a small chance that Dog wins this matchup if he just keeps hitting face... And draws things that go face <laughs> in the next couple turns. It, but it's, it's just going to be tough for him to do so, I think. Uh, we'll have to see, though, because VLPS is running out of stuff. Looks like no 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 activation from the uh, Despite this turn. Decides to slow it down just a little bit. Deck sizes matter so much at this point, too. And there's a Shield Slam. No surprise. Oh, he doesn't want to pull the Golden Monkey out, though. Has he cast the map yet? Oh, has he cast the map yet? I don't think he has. Okay, well, if he has a cast of the map, then uh, he can. He's free to kill that Death Lord no matter what, uh, because he's he's played both his. Oh yeah, okay. So he still does have the map. So yeah, he's. That's uh definitely you want to remove that before you draw into the map and before you play the map. Yeah, I imagine that VLPS is going to be keen enough to know that once he's seen the Death Lord, it's very likely that Dog's got a second copy of it with it, and so to hold on to the map is going to be like the play here. He does yeah. not want the Golden Monkey to even be able be able to be pulled out of his deck via a Death Lord. And so because of that, he's just going to hang on to the map until he can ensure he draws Golden Monkey with it. And Dog can kill off his own Death Lord. It's actually not that uncommon uh, in this matchup just because you can throw in your Death Lord and then brawl. And then you either win the brawl or your Death Lord dies, his monkey pops out, and you win the brawl. So <laughs> in both scenarios... Uh, you, you sort of win the brawl in some sense or another, but um, Dog does have a lot of resources, but he's got four cards left. Is that going to be enough to win in the game? Uh, well, VLPS has got six left in his deck, it looks like. And one of those is going to be a monkey when, it, when he eventually decides to use the map, so that's sort of going to be the, the one that makes it or makes or breaks this game, especially since he's got a lot of those dead cards. Um... Like, the Double Revenge is, is not going to be of much use. Those are going to be legendaries. Harrison Jones is probably going to be a legendary. Yeah, it doesn't have to do anything with the Boombot this turn. Just, or I'm sorry, the Dr. Boom this turn. Just the Brawl takes care of it. And then second Death Lord. And tank up! Yeah, but I feel like Dog's just, at this point, has kind of been pushed out of this one. The fact that his Elise got drawn from the Death Lord. Is and just, just cards in his so last brutal. three cards. Yeah, everything just kind of went wrong for Dog this game. Yeah. Oh man, this is just really rough for him. It's kind of it's kind of tough to say how this would have panned out uh, if it wasn't for um, Death Lord really d putting a big deciding factor on this. I mean, I think both of them have been playing this one really well, using their resources, fantastic. Uh, even Dog kind of recognizing he needed to turn the corner and try to actually kill VLPS, and now it's just kind of falling apart at this point. I mean, this is di the disadvantage of drawing cards is if you can't finish your opponent, they just win the fatigue race. Yeah. Yep, he's and even reluctant to play a shield maiden here. Says, it's hey, his last this. card. This card wow. is his last card. Yeah, that's brutal. <laughs> now, ten cards in hand next turn. So, isn't is never going to have an opportunity to overdraw. VLPS says, at this point, I know that Justice Card is your last card. I know what's happening here. I'm free to just slowly develop the board piece by piece and keep chipping away. Oh, man. Everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong for Dog in this game. You know, the, at least coming on the Death Lord and then Just Card 2 Heart being the last card. 
Um, at least he didn't kill both Death Lords and have his Elise and his Justice Car come out. I guess that's the one way this game could have been worse. But it was close. It's bad enough as it is. Yeah. You know, either either the Justicar or the Elise getting pulled is bad. Um, if you had to pick one, I think you would choose Justicar. But then the Justicar being the thirtieth card, like that's it. It couldn't have gone worse for him this game. This was this was the nightmare. Yeah. And look at these cards. BLPS has still has you know a couple of big minions left, and um. Even then, he's got double shield block and double revenge. That's at least four legendaries for cards that are never going to be used. Dog and he to play this one out. I don't, I don't know what he could possibly fish for at this point, but you, know, you can't blame anyone for sticking it out. Yeah, you, know, you can see the difference here too. I mean, VLP is not having to use either shield blocks. Gave him such a big advantage this game. I don't even sure he plays Gold Monkey. Yeah, I think he just Grom and attack for four. Yeah, because Grom is one of the best legendaries that you can get. So your Grom's going to turn into a legendary, probably one that's worse than your Grom. Dogs hope this game is actually kind of, I think, that VOPS plays Gold Monkey and gets a bad set of legendaries. I think it quite literally was his win condition this game. Yeah. But Golden Monkey might even... No. I'm just not even hit the board. Yeah. I think you, yeah. at this point, you, you're winning the Fatigue War, I think, by three cards. So, yeah, you might as well just play the minions. Here we go. Let's Seven see. Nat Paggles. Not quite. A new Barak as well. So, that's in Nazdormu. <laughs> I feel like Nazdormu <laughs> on ladder is one of the best legendaries that you can get. Because everybody's always, like, alt-tabbed. And then you slam <laughs> Nazdormu. Just in, check out Reddit. In, instantly end turn. I feel like I've won games like that so many times. Yeah, All right, well, I slam it down. Yeah, I just don't don't think Dog's gonna win. As soon as he sees this a new Barak, I'd ex I'd expect him to tap out. And yeah, that is, good. yeah. And VLPS is gonna go dip out of his chair to do a victory dance after that one. Some, you got to get up and stretch after those matches, man. Those are, those are long ones. <laughs> Control Warrior Mirrors, I can only play about two of those a day before I'm just burnt and I need a nap. Before he's out of 24 hours. Yeah. All right, well, that's uh, uh, VOPS at least putting himself on the board 2-1 to one now and uh, still has to... He, he's he's going up against Rogue, which, you know, if we know Dog, I'd imagine it's Malagos Rogue because that's what he's been playing the majority of the time in, in this tournament and his second-place finish at uh, um, I-57, uh, uh, the True Server... True Server, something or other. Zombie ah, True Server Championship. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. The True Server Championship. Gotcha. Um, and <laughs> also, that's what he plays on his stream. I, I just, I even read it like an hour ago, and I couldn't even remember the name. Um, and that deck does really well against Priest most of the time. We saw actually in the finals of that tournament, Dog lost against a Priest with the Malagos Rogue, but it was because you know, all similar to that War game we just saw, everything that could go wrong did go wrong and dog also has control warrior which lines up pretty nicely against a lot of these decks i'd say that vlps still has remaining yeah not a big surprise to see vlps queue up the hunter here this is traditionally one of the matchups that can put a lot of heat on rogue and force them to use cards very ineffectively and then also clock them uh with that hero power and so with this match dog's gonna have to find a way to get aggressive at some point in this game he's gonna need to stick something on the board and start hitting vlps in the face over and over with it now, VLPS's goal is simply to force Dog into a position where he can't do that. He wants him to have to trade those Tomb Pillagers into minions. He wants him to not have those Earthen Ring Farseers early on so that he can't find a way to effectively fight the board state. And given that he just draws Man Scientist here, you know, I'd be curious to see what the traps are in VLPS's stack. But turn three Earthen Ring Farseer and then having Prep and Tomb Pillager and Antique Healbot behind, this is the kind of matchup that Dog can actually win with this game. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Tomb Pillager... I think improve this matchup a lot because it, it increases the chance that you're able to win via race. Uh, five attack on a four mana minion is exceptional, and uh, e even though this deck doesn't run like oils, uh, unless we're I we we haven't seen Malagos yet, so we can't pinpoint it yet. But if he does run it, it probably doesn't run uh, oil, so it can't race in that regard. But having stronger minions and having some extra heals and some extra cycle can can sometimes lead to that. And I think Dog's in a, in a great spot, uh, given the average, 
you know, aggressive hunter versus rogue match. Yeah, I mean, even using the prep, using the prep here, it kind of illustrates the importance of what that card means in this matchup. It allows you to eventually take the tempo from the hunter player. So despite the fact that it's like pretty horribly inefficient in this spot, the point is it gives him the tempo back. And given that he's seen this kind of opener from VLPS, it looks to me like Dog has concluded that this is explosive trap. Uh, and against this build, that's totally fine and reasonable to assume. You know, Face Hunter, one of the ways it loses the game also is that they just get swarmed by little mm -hmm. tiny minions and your opponent just gets all the favorable trades, they get all the good attacks, they use one card to swing that race. Uh, so here, the fact that DLPS is, I'm, that is, I'm sorry, the fact that Dog has gotten back a 5-4 and a 3-3 here, it means that now he's in a position where he can actually win this race. He's down on life right now, but he's going to be start hitting DLPS turn after turn with these cards. That's exactly where he wants to be. Yeah, which would be crazy. A, a lot of times Space Hunter, like uh, it, even Hybrid Hunter, can get through so many points of healing and still be able to come out with a win. And this will be, at the end of the day, three from the... Uh, Earthring Farce here, and 8 from the Antigo, but it's 11 points of healing. That's actually not that much compared to the sheer amount of damage that a uh, an aggressive hunter can do, and Dog's still not that close to piecing together a lethal damage of his own. Yeah, but This is the spot where VLPS is going to have a little bit of trouble now. I mean, he's got no board left. He's facing down 8 damage. He knows that he doesn't have that many more disruption tools left in his deck. Can he afford to invest the kill command and the quick shot into this board state? to stop the damage or does he need to just go you know what maybe i can't win the game in a couple turns and have to start throwing spells of the face and hope that, that works well if he ignores this board he's dead in three turns and judging by his hand i he and how much mana he has available to him he he's not going to be able to kill dog in three turns from 22 mm -hmm. it feels like because the maximum amount of damage in his hand is is eight plus six right now it's 14 even if he fit it fits in a hero power and fit plays all of his cards in the next three turns. You know, it's still only 20 damage, so we'd have to draw additional burn and find ways to put in. So, oh, looks like PLPS. Yeah, here we go, the boys. Plan. <laughs> and this is kind of Dog's last hurrah right here. I mean, may choose to prep the fan here to try to find something a little bit more valuable. Uh, but at this point, I got to believe that this is very heavily favored in, on Dog's side right now. 13 damage on board, plus the one from the hero power. I mean, Kill Command at this... I mean, now it looks like... VLPS might have gone, hey, I could have used that quick shot on that 5-2 last turn, maybe save myself a turn or so. I mean, the fact that he saw the Emperor afterwards, kind of brutal for him. But this is it. I mean, is he trading the Emperor here? There's no way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Six to face. Gadgets and Auctioneer for Dog. But he's at and 11. He, he, got an em he got an Emperor tick, and he got an additional mana from the Arcane Golem. So he needs to find, if he finds what... Uh, Sinister Strike, no. He's got 12 mm -hmm. with the Shiv. It looks like he's considering Shiving Face here. Yeah, but I like the fan. Yeah, he can cl he can clear the board here, and I don't think it's possible for, um, for a, a Hunter to do 11 damage from an empty board with 7 mana. Uh, they would, yeah, I don't think it's possible. Because they, they, with eight mana, they could, they could, but not with seven. So <laughs> I, I don't think, yeah. It's funny that if Dog, if, if would, he, would he have won if he had gone for the damage? He would have won this turn. He's going to win this game anyway, but this, this game was illustrated the importance of getting a threat on the board and actually putting a clock on the Hunter player. They don't do well when they're functioning against a clock and their board's been disrupted. That's really the big difference in this one. Mm -hmm. So close. But so far, VLPS falls in game number four. Dog's got a 3-1 lead at this point, and that's got to be very comfortable. Now, I know that I have been in a similar position to this in uh, the Onog feature number one, where I was up three games to zero versus Eversiction, and then he reverse swept me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think that was the day you decided... Didn't you get... Oh, no, no, no. You got in the winter prelims, I think you got swept with Secret Paladin. That was the day you said never to play Secret Paladin again. Yeah. And then in the uh, Onog, you got swept by, with Agro Shaman? Zoo. Uh, I got swept oh, with Zoo. Oh, it was Zoo. Okay, okay, okay. It was Zoo. Yeah. Is, yep. Was that the day you decided to never play Zoo again? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll keep playing Zoo. Okay. Eversition's lineup was actually built really well to tackle Zoo. Yeah. Um, and so I, I got four like pretty mediocre starts, which is fine. I mean, four average starts. I'll take four average starts. Mm -hmm. um, and he just, he just got just enough 
to fight me off every single game. I made a couple of errors in that series as well. Every single game. I remember casting that series and I was saying, oh my goodness. Just find so the answers right on time. And Eversiction, of course, being the first player uh, that's uh, going to be joining us at PAX Prime for the finals at the end of the season. Of course, the winner for this feature, number two, uh, will we'll join him as the, as the second player. So that's what's on the line here. That's what's at stake. Also a $6,000 prize pool. So that's a that's an added bonus for these players. And Dog right now is up 3-1 in this first semifinal. Yeah, this is a bit of a tough matchup, though. Priest versus uh, Control Warrior. Control Warrior has so many tools that it uses to fight against aggressive styles of decks. It wants to kill basically every threat their opponent plays and then restabilize the game with its life total, using armor up, using tank up, using shield maiden, stuff like that. But against Control Priest, their plan is kind of to out-attrition their opponents, like have cards that get very effective long-term swings in the build. Harrison Jones, uh, one of these cards, being able to take out a weapon and draw some extra cards, uh, he's going to back this up with Death Lords. He's going to back this up with Entombs. He's just going to kill all the high-profile threats and then rely on Fatigue to win this race. But Dog has smartly done this to where he's looking like he's taking the aggressive stance. Now the Harrison Jones has clocked him for five, and VLPS is going to have to find a way to fight against this. Sun Belcher is a fantastic answer, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is the kind of position Dog needs to be playing. He needs to be finding windows of opportunity to start getting through consistent damage and keep pressure on VLPS so he has to ineffectively use the tool at some point in the game. Yeah, and VLPS's deck, his lineup is, or his his deck list is built in a way where it has some strong points against uh, Dog's uh, Control Warrior deck, but it's also got some weak points. Flash Shield's not that strong because you're rarely going to find a situation where you can burst out your opponent. A lot of times it's used to just like you know clear off a Shield Maiden with an Arcanine Soul Priest, which is still strong. Uh, but you really want those super late game tools like double and tomb and additional AoE and your own elite star seeker to be able to fight back because Priest kind of does what the warrior's gonna do. They do the whole minion thing a little better because they have a hero power that can interact with the board and they can steal your stuff as well as well as having their stuff. But they do tend to fall a little bit behind in the fatigue battle just because, you know, warriors can go above thirty. So <laughs> I love this matchup. The way that Elise flies around with that visual. When a player draws a card and plays it super fast, yeah. the visual from the spectator is that the minion kind of clings to the side of the board in that elevated position. That animation is just, just like, it looked like, it's what I imagine the Reckless Rocketeer's attack animation should be. Yeah. Where it just kind of like <laughs> wildly zooms around. Um, the yeah, back to normal board position. Uh, Elise for both players at this point. Uh, Dog's got to be happy with his Elise. Uh, he'll be kind of, I imagine he'll be utilizing that same thing that we saw in VLPS in the Warrior game, where if he actually draws the map, there's a chance he holds on to it until he can ensure the draw of the Golden Monkey. So that way it can't be thought stolen. It can't be pulled out by Death Lord. Uh, things of that nature. Yeah. And so because of that, VLPS actually has a little bit of an advantage in this one. He's kind of free to, to unlock his Golden Monkey a little bit sooner than Dog would. And then also that threat of entombing on the golden monkey is also a big deal. Yeah, um, it, it's it's kind of funny because uh, having a lot of dead cards as a priest in this matchup works to your advantage because it gives you more incentive to turn them into legendaries. So we talked about how one of the weaknesses of priests is that they have dead cards, but in this matchup, it's a strength. Yeah, I sent Alkani. He was missing a little bit earlier. Going to get some great use out of it this turn, though. Flash heal, taking out that Elise, and then hero power on that big game hunter. Great yeah. turn for the LPS. It's a little risky once again for Dog to kill the Death Lord uh, so willy nilly, but he realized that he played the Elise, which is the, mo the more important piece. He could have pulled out just a card True Heart from his deck, but I think he was willing to take the risk. I think uh, it was probably like a 1 in 6, 1 in 7 chance, judging by how many minions I think he has left. Like an Acolyte, you know, an, uh, maybe another Shield Maiden. So um, he, he's willing to take the risk once again, saying, eh, maybe I can't. I probably can't get as unlucky as I did in that Control Warrior mirror, so I'm just going to go for it. They can't get unlucky forever, that's the case. Unless you're me, you're Ranad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dr. Boom from LPS. Is that the, is, that's not the Entombed one either, right? Mm. Is the, does it say if it's Entombed or not? It should, yeah, but I don't know from Spectator if we see it right away. We'd have to, like, mouse over it, I think. Uh, no, it's not the Entombed one, so... We got a, a real quick look at it there. So still uh, another Dr. Boom back in VLPS's deck. Dog just going to shield slam this and imagine keep hammering away. 
This Boombot isn't really that significant of a threat right now. And so for Dog, like, he's running low on resources. This is the time he's got to get a lot of mileage out of these minions if he wants to make uh, if he wants to make something happen here. And VLPS, his tools don't really line up super well versus this board. Oh, oh. major good Boombot there. That's great, because now he can... He actually has a use... Ooh, I, I was thinking he was going to Cabal Shadow Priest, but I guess that slime isn't going anywhere. So if he really second wants to, he can just do it next turn. That's the second tomb for VLPS at this point, too. Uh, that's really interesting. I mean, typically you do not see a player use the second in tomb in this matchup. And I think that the fact that VLPS has already cast his own Elise and that he can't just keep taking five damage over and over again, this is the yeah. kind of position the dog was looking for, was, was to force VLPS to use the tool inefficiently. Now that golden monkey is potentially a big win condition for him. Yeah, it, it, it might come down to the quality of legendaries that the golden monkey pulls from each player. Uh, VLPS does get just a card too hard first, but unlike in the Control Warrior Mirror, it's not as big of a deal. Because uh, at some point, you can just sort of expect that the Priest is going to be at 30 health eventually uh, if they manage to stabilize on the board. So uh, we'll, we'll see if Dog can pull his uh, before his 30th card uh, this time around. But he started to, he's, he's running out of resources now. You mentioned earlier he had to get a lot of mileage out of his minions, but that, that just didn't happen. And now he's just out of stuff. Yeah, even debating the shield slam here. I don't blame him for this whatsoever. Is this five going to face, or is it taking out that wild pyro? Yeah, I, the wild pyromancer are just so threatening. Any minion on board is really threatening for the priest uh, at this point. Like he's seen that VLPS has been holding on to so many cards this game, it's very likely that he's got Velen's chosen in hand. And if he does that, he just loses his minion. Uh, so at this point. Once again, uh, that five damage coming in, but this, but now VLPS has played the Justa card, so this five damage isn't worth nearly as much as it was a couple turns ago. And Auk and I just such a welcome draw in this matchup, just continuing yeah. to clear minion after minion. And you can see uh, why VLP, or sorry, Dog decided not to, or sorry, VLPS decided not to put the Cabal Shadow Priest before. Uh, the reason is in Dog's hand, the Death Lord. Uh, he knows that Dog runs that double Death Lord. Uh, that's sort of what you need to try and pull out the Golden Monkey in this matchup. That's also why Dog just, um, or you know, just card True Heart, I, I suppose. Uh, that's one of the reasons why Dog didn't play it, I think, um, because he he doesn't want it to get stolen and then doesn't want it to stick around for a while since he doesn't have a way to remove it and potentially pull out something that he doesn't want out of his deck, like his just card True Heart. Yeah, getting a little bit low on cards, is Dog. Deck size is also very important in this matchup. I mean, the, another thing about that that Entomb from earlier, where VLPS chose to use that second Entomb, if he's just far enough ahead in Fatigue, he can just wear Dog down. Like, the fact that the Golden Monkey ends up sticking to the board is really not that big of an issue. Yeah. Um, Shadow War Death to answer this, and just going to continue to heal up. All, close to 30 at this point. All that work that Dog did, it was to get that second Entomb out. Is basically the one thing he can take away from that big investment. Yeah. But now we got a Monkey in the deck. Needs to draw that sooner rather than later as well. Do you think he'd like to see the Dusted card before or after he draws the Gold Monkey? Oh, before, for sure. You know, unless he he has confidence in his ability to create a Dusted card True Heart with his Monkey. Yeah, even Bash on the Northshire Cleric. I mean, the concern for for Valen's Chosen is very real for Dog at the moment. I can take the hit. Oh, there's that Shield Maiden. <laughs> Yep, above 30. Rarely you see a priest in that spot. Yeah. I lied. I, I, I said earlier oh. that... Oh! Without Desikar Chuar being played yet, I guess he realizes that at this point he just needs to start getting those legendaries. Ooh. And he picks up an Anubarak! And Mogur the Ogre here is actually... I mean, this is this is not a bad minion to have at this point. You Just anything that's big is what Dog needs on board right now. Yeah, and all of a sudden, Dog has become VLPS. That's what happens when you play the Golden Monkey. <laughs> all right, whew, we're back. But yeah, New Barak, especially since I, you talked about so much the um, the risk of using that second in Tomb early, and one of those is even after Golden Monkey is played, there's a couple of legendaries that can just lose you the game. Malorn and a New Barak are two that just have sort of infinite value in the late game. It, it, they make it so... It's not impossible to fatigue, at least with a new Brock, but it, it gets 
close to it, you know, because they have a minion to reload every single turn, and even if it dies, it still leaves something on the board. So we'll, we'll definitely have to see. This one's going to come down to it. VOPS needs his own monkey to yeah, combat I think this. So. There's a light bomb. Not surprised to see. And Kamal Shadow Priest sticks around. If Dog had played that Faux Reaper, this would have been a really interesting turn. Kel'Thuzad oh, even gets picked up. Oh my goodness. The the quality of legendaries for Dog is is through the roof. If his last card is a Malorn, he's got like the trifecta. Like eventually you'll have Kel'Thuzad, Anubarak, and Malorn like all stick. And then it just becomes ridiculous because a Malorn gets put back in your deck and it comes back at the end of the turn. It's like, what? Mm. It's infinite Malorns. <laughs> It's the one thing every player needs. Yeah, infinite Malorns. Yeah. Well, Death Lord not fantastic versus Anubarok. I think that VLPS is looking at a trade here. Uh, the thing is, Death Lord's not going to pull anything out. Oh, well. It's just going to plop back in the hand. Yeah, but I think Dog may be looking at just Anubarok after Anubarok, but finally that balance is 4 12 taunts, nothing to scoff at. Black Knight would be bad. Oh. <laughs> Well, we have a second shot at uh, <laughs> if he's at Malorn potentially. <laughs> if he's unhappy with his legendaries. Uh, the thing is, that's basically like a free extra card. Um, like at the at the very end of everything, you know? Yeah. Um, the only thing is that in order to play the last golden monkey, he'll have to have Anubarak on the board already, or he'll have to potentially give up the Anubarak. Unless in some miraculous circumstance... His Anubarak turns into an Anubarak. Yeah, Dog is going to be forced to use his Kalthazad here. The major, part of the major pressure that's coming out here, too, is that since VLPS has a heal for four because of that Justicar, he's able to, to actually deal with the Anubarak fairly well with the Death Lord for turn after turn and start setting Dog into that fatigue state where the damage really starts to add up. And so Dog has to find a way to get this board back under control. And Anubarak's not going to do it. Like If he just keeps playing Anubarak after Anubarak, he's actually going to lose control over this board, and pretty quickly. So the fact yeah. that he's chosen to use this Bow Reaper here is a big nod to that fact. And VOPS has an answer for this as well, with the second Velen's chosen. So this could, this could actually be the end of the game right here. Just the fact that VOPS has been able to get kind of a Titan's grip on this board and keep Dog from really pulling ahead with that Anubarak. Yeah, I... This, I, that Death Lord's going to be like impossible to get through, it feels like. And, I mean, Dog still might have a shot as a desperation play to Elise into Monkey, into Deathwing, or, or some something crazy like that. But even then, that means a Light Bomb pretty much seals the deal. So, it's going to be really tough. And Dog just rolling his eyes. He, he knew that those Velen's Chosen's were there. It's just I don't think he really had a choice but to sort of go all in on on the uh, on the golden monkey early early enough. Yeah, here's the fatigue. Start rolling at this point. I don't know if Dog can climb out of this one. All right. He needs VLPS to make a mistake right here. If VLPS continues to trade, I think he's going to stay way ahead in this game. Yeah. That's exactly what it's got his sight set on too. I think it's gonna be a second light bomb. Yeah, or... just, even just, just play stuff. Yeah, he's just gonna ignore it. Okay. Oh, but the kill the Yeah, this is the this is the kind of turn that Dog would have needed, but still with two circle of healings back behind. This is still gonna be really tough. I mean These minions are never gonna die. Well Kel'Thuzad's gonna die, I can tell you that. VOPS is, what, three turns ahead of Fatigue? He, he can draw if he wants to get closer to the monkey. But at this point, his he might not even need the monkey to win the game. Uh, just because he's getting multiple uh, minion kills uh, over and over again with the minions that he has on board. What's the best way to go about this? I imagine it's going to involve some sort of circle healing. It's the Light Bomb. Light Bomb doesn't kill that Keldazad, though. Oh, it does because of the extra damage. Double Velen's Chosen. I forgot about that. The Double Velen's Chosen wow. actually... That's a I mean, clutch that... play. 
That is that is a really big deal, actually. But the thing is, now Dog gets two in Ubarox. Yeah, but he's, he doesn't have time to play them. Though. Yeah, you can. I don't think you'll you'll ever find yourself in a situation where you can play both of them, um, especially since. No matter what, it feels like Dog still has to kill this Anubarak, or sorry, this Death Lord over two turns. He can play Mogor the Ogre and just hope that the Death Lord's attack misses and that he can load up two minions on the board. But, you know, that's that's not really a risk that I think he can take. And uh, VLPS finally finds the map and oh, looks like he's going to draw, draw the monkey. Yeah, here we go. And I don't think he's actually trading into the Anubarak this turn. You now putting the 4-4 on board so that we just kill the Death Lord outright. Yeah, chooses not to. Those yeah. are mediocre legendaries. Tinkmaster Overspark can be good. Uh, especially if you can, you know, land it automatically onto a um, like a hundred percent onto like an Anubarak to sort of get rid of that endless Anubarak effect. But Brand Bronze Spirit's not that great. Trogsor's not that great in a in a land where there's no more spells left in the game. Oh, there is that map left. Oh, there is the map oh, left. Confessor oh, Confessor Paltris. The last card. That legendary is pretty good, and we'll see what he's gonna get. Not Nat Pagel. The Beast? Hmm. I don't know about the Beast. Yeah, I, Dog doesn't have a way to actually kill the Confessor this turn either. Unless he plays Mogor the Ogor and prays. <laughs> That might be the best play, honestly. You, yeah. Uh, because if he lets these minions... If he keeps the Confessor Pilchus up, that's one more legendary guaranteed that VLPS gets. Like that, He basically just creates a card for free. And I don't know if he'll ever be able to get through to that beast, which means that the downside will, will never play into effect. If he just plays a Nubarak here, it probably just gets traded into, it feels like. So... Um, I'm not sure, because even if you play Morgor the Ogor, first you have to land the 50% that it doesn't attack the minion that you chose, and then you have to land the 1 in 4 to attack the Confessor Paltris, which is really rare. But it's uh, not, not something that's going to happen easily. So Dog realizes that, just play the strongest minion once again, and finally push through the Death Lord. I don't know if this is enough, though. I mean, VLPS's board is looking so good right now. Ooh, what's it gonna be? Extra legendaries every single turn. Captain Greenskin not, like, too fantastic here. But the damage is starting to pour on at this point. And I think that's the scarier thing. Dog's gonna have to hope for a miracle here. Yeah, I think he's going to... Uh, have to play the monkey and hope for the best. Maybe attack into the beast to this get that extra cool. minion, the extra attack next turn. And we'll yeah. see if he replaces what he gets with something good. Yeah, not quite. He's gonna <laughs> the double skeleton the knight. The skeleton knight is also potentially infinite value. No, no, no. Wait, wait. What happens? No, no. Cause yeah. They're <laughs> <laughs> so what, happens what happens is the game a... ends because VLPS takes the board and yeah. his confessor active. You automatically lose Joust if it's uh, if both players are fatigued, if I remember yeah. correctly. I know I've that seen that in before. That matchup really honestly boiled down to the Velen's Chosens and that Death Lord. It just yeah. got so much value at the end of the game. A dog didn't have an opportunity to take the board back. And despite the fact that he landed the Golden Monkey so early, he just didn't he didn't really have utility in his legendaries. He just had raw power and mm -hmm. the lack of that utility meant the death lord just you know 614 that can be healed for four a turn is going to do a lot of work and that kept the lps ahead that entire game and that's part of what makes the control warrior versus priest matchup so very difficult is that they get the liberty of playing their golden monkey afterwards they get to continue to use all their spells effectively to kind of figure out what their game plan needs to be and then just wait and the longer they wait eventually that fatigue damage adds up to so much that you can't fight through it anymore yeah that uh, that Death Lord killed like I don't know ten Anubaraks and and like nine Nerubians. And it's funny because Anubarak was a, a boss at the end of a heroic dungeon in Wrath of the Lich King, and uh, it, it's sort of funny that players used to farm that dungeon a lot 
for whatever type of currency that World of Warcraft used to use back then for Rogue Dungeons. So that Death Lord really wanted to save up his seals to buy a piece of epic loot. <laughs> I mean, we're going way role play on this we're one. Going way <laughs> Good job, Death Lord. You didn't even Combo. need the rest of your four party. You were the tank and the healer. <laughs> Combo Reno Warlock versus uh, Golden Monkey Control Warrior for Dog. This is a matchup that I know that players go back and forth on. A lot of the Control Warrior players will tell you they're very favored. But then a lot of the Reno players tell you, no, this matchup's easy. I beat them every time. It's not a big deal. TJ, who, if you had to choose a bet mm -hmm. for your life, who are you taking in this one? Uh, it's really tough because it... Uh, I don't even know, man. This I, I feel like this matchup's like one of the closest matchups that we have in the current iteration of Hearthstone that's closer, closest to 50-50. As far as like win rates go, it's, even in competitive, like you look back at like the Winter Championships, this match was played like probably <laughs> ten times, and I believe it was like fifty percent win rate for both sides. I like the Control Warrior just because you know I'm a Control Warrior player, and I feel like you have enough removal to get through, especially if you have Just Card Two Heart earlier against the combo Reno. You can effectively make them have like four dead cards in their hand for most of the game, and for the Reno Jackson like doesn't matter sometimes because eventually you're going to get a lease. And eventually you're going to get legendaries. This is another one of those matchups where the quality of legendaries you get from Elise can have a big impact on the outcome of the game. Oh, that's by a very welcome pickup for Dog at this point. You saw that roll for two on Implosion on the Acolyte. That gave Dog an extra draw. We let him clear an extra minion. And he kind of just rolled his eyes when it happened. Like, hey, yeah. sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, but that's the risk of running a powerful card like Implosion. Is it does have a built-in failure rate sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's allowed Dog, I think, to actually get what I would consider a little bit of a favorable footing. Bloodsail Corsair out of the nice. Dark Peddler, though. Feels good, man. Next level. But yeah, one of the w ways that you know Warlock can win this matchup is just by pressuring. Uh, they do have a lot of mid-range stuff. They have Imgang bosses. They have Defender of Argus. They have Lothab. They have Emperor Thorsan. Those are a lot of really strong-bodied minions that have powerful effects that need to be removed, and if not removed, uh, especially Emperor Thorsan, will we'll start getting lots of uh, overall value. Oh. Alex Straza pulled. I can't tell if that's good or not. It, it's good because Dog doesn't really have a good way to remove it. Well, it's good some percentage of the time. We'll yeah. let the Brawl figure out what percentage that's going to be. But 25% of the time, it's going to be massive. And it misses. One sale Corsair. He's too strong. Too strong, yeah. Getting rid of a despite and surviving the brawl. And Alex Ross is kind of a key card to lose in this matchup too. You know, I played against VLPS a lot on ladder, and when he plays this deck, you kind of what you just mentioned, he plays it a lot like a mid range deck where he just continues to pressure turn after turn and keep you on that back foot to open up windows of opportunity for his combo earlier than he normally would. So yeah. dog right here, fantastic turn from him, being able to just a car tank up and shield slam the emperor. That takes away one of the major threats in this one. VLPS actually didn't get the reduction on his uh, on his Leroy Jenkins or on a, or um, on an abusive sergeant. So his damage is a little bit more limited because of that in the long term. Uh, so he's got his work cut out for him. I mean, the fact that Alex Straz has gone too, that's about, you know, that can be anywhere from 10 to, to 15 points of damage that he doesn't have access to this game. Yeah. And for the, yeah, it's, this is going to be tough uh, for for Dog to find a way. He's going to have to use Grom in order to remove this, but this is pretty vulnerable. And now he doesn't have a finisher pre-Elise to, to work with. The LPS could pick up a big game hunter here. Uh, not quite. Ooh. He does have the option of Faceless Manipulator this Grom this turn, though. And it looks like he's going to go for it. Yeah, if I don't blame him at all, that's 10 damage. Oh yeah, Pyroblast. And he's got uh, Leroy Jenkins' power overwhelming Hellfire, which is you know 13 points of burst, and that's given that none of his boards survive. So pushing that damage could end up being a big deal. And the OPS just goes ahead and throws out the heal bot just as an extra body on the board to maybe get in for some damage next turn. Yeah, dog gonna clean this up very nicely though. Execute on the Grom. He's got the attack into the Lotheb. He's got the bash for the anti heal bot. Armor up, or tank up, excuse me, and Elise. 
this one might have just been sealed, I think, for for Dog. If he could manage to take care of the next couple of threats that VLPS poses, it's going to be very difficult for him to win this game. Yeah, and now VLPS uh, has gotten rid of a piece of that combo, so his maximum damage, especially without Alex Straza, without Faces and Manipulator, is just cut significantly. So, um, VLPS is going to have to rely on now sort of this this hodgepodge, this mismatch of of, uh, of creatures that he has in his in his deck that you know this he, you have to put one crew of, of minions. This motley crew of minions, exactly. That's a, that's a great <laughs> way to put it. Uh, that he has left in his deck, like a mind control tick and an acidic swamp, who's have to fight against whatever's going to come out of that golden monkey, which is, uh, I, I don't know if that's going to be able to win VLPS the game. He he still has some value from from the Emperor. He still has his Reno Jackson left to bring him back up. And he's actually, he's just going to use it as a 4-6, basically. And that, that's going to heal him for 5. 10, 13 out of hand, plus 7 on board. He's got 24 damage available to him. Second Shield Slam is going to really... Put him, put dog out of reach of this one though. You could, he's kind of reluctant to use it almost when you see this. He's like, should I even use it this turn? When your opponent plays a four six for tempo and they just acidic swamp who's obviously searching for tempo as well too. This kind of plays VLPS VLPS's hand face up in this spot. Like he looks at it and he knows that this is the turn he has to start. He has to make something happen. Twisting Nether comes out to deal with this board position, so dog's getting initiative here. But the big story is that VLPS is so far down in in damage potential at this point. You know, this yeah. isn't the typical Reno build, you know, where sometimes you find Fugan and Stalag, where Jaraxxus is going to be in here to get those 6-6s six turn after turn. He's relying on the Leroy burst to end this game, and Dog is at 34 after all this. Yeah, and but the one thing is the oh. Dr. Boom off the top, and Dog needs some good stuff now. He's got ways to deal with the board as it is, but he still needs some good stuff because he's using a lot of resources to just try and hold on to the board. And uh, he's still got that monkey in his deck, but he, he doesn't have too many ways to cycle outside of like a shield block. Whereas VLPS is drawing, you know, two cards a turn. Even though he's getting closer to fatigue, does he have any? Does he have any strong stuff left in his deck? Is the question. And wow, I mean, look at this Leroy Mortal Coil to try to get some repetitive damage out of this Leroy. This is actually a really keen play here from VLPS. You know, the fact that Dog's only got one card left. This is the kind of board. That VLPS might be able to get multiple shots out of this <laughs> out of this Leroy, and it looks like it's going to be brawl first. I mean, if he brawls, you brawl if this first, brawl successful, I think you do. Okay. I mean, you're potentially killing ten damage here with this brawl. But if it's all right, that's a, a you know the middle outcome uh, of it, I think, because Leroy would have been able to contest the Golden Monkey. So now Dog is almost always going to have a high impact draw every turn and VLPS is basically out of stuff like I said that Mike control tech I don't know how well that's going to fight up against legendaries from the golden monkey maybe he'll oh. do well against Nat Pagel yeah he needs a pretty good one here he's considering silencing this monkey here too just to start pushing some damage but if this is really going to come down to dog's first draw here if his first draw is very strong um, I'm not sure VLPS can actually win this game yeah He's actually going to power overwhelming and shadow flame just to remove the golden monkey off the board. He's pretty much all in on this Twilight Drake. Which... He's not really making much progress either. I mean, the tank up is just healing him for four every turn. <laughs> Drogzor! Yes. It's better than Dr. Boom. We called it years ago when GVG came out. <laughs> I said it myself. Trogzor is better than Dr. Boom. Don't expect Dr. Boom to get played. And look at that. VLPS has to trade into the Trogzor. Boom. All right, well, VLPS has... This is everything. This is all that he has left. And it hey! the bump. That is going to do it. Once again, Dog plays minions so fast that they pop up on the right side of the screen. And that means that Dog is going to take the series. A lot of fun games in that one. It's not often that you get to see Golden Monkey matches like three times in a single series. Yeah, pretty impressive stuff there from Dog, too. Just playing so aggressively to, to attack the board states. Um, just a couple of times that he forced VLPS to do something that was a little bit off balance is that's like the mark of a very good professional is someone who understands that matchup potential and knows to seize those little windows of opportunity. And I think VLPS did a wonderful job of fighting back, but in the end, the matchup, 
Uh, the fact that that Justicar was found early enough for Dog allowed him to get so much extra life that he didn't have an opportunity to push through in that one, but made the most of his tools. When he went for the Leroy Mortal Coil, when he had the Twilight Drake on board, when he even pressured super hard to kill the Gold Monkey and hope that Dog drew a couple of dead legendaries in a row, he also is taking every single opportunity he can to try to pull back into the game. But at the end of the day, just too many strong legendaries. Indeed. So that's going to be Dog moving on to the grand finals of feature tournament number two. And VLPS will go home with a third, fourth place finish. Uh, $750 still and 10 Geico points. So if he continues to do well, uh, or if he does well in the opens, then he can still secure himself him spot, himself a spot in PAX Prime Finals at the end of the year. But uh, we do have a semifinal left as well as a finals left. So lots of action still to come. Make sure, guys, during the break, you head over to geico.onog.gg. Sign up to win. That's Cyber Power PC, and also enter into win, or sorry, enter into the open tournament, which is going to happen on April 30th. So in just two weeks, if you want your chance to compete. But next semifinal up is going to be Zalay versus Lead Paint. So don't go anywhere, guys.